I think everyone agrees that um, systemic chemotherapy is the first line, um, but you can't stay on systemic chemotherapy forever for a variety of reasons, both toxicity and the cancer becomes resistant. Um, beyond that, then, you know, I think it comes down to a variety of different ablative therapies, which I, you know, I think we, we will focus on a little more uh, versus surgical resection. Uh, because even in the setting of locally advanced disease, uh, there are centers that are doing very aggressive surgical resections that include uh, veins and arteries. Um, and so I think that it does have to be you know, part of the conversation. Um, and then beyond that, I believe that you know there are some other even more experimental types of regional therapies, but I'd say the things that are sort of prime time are ablative modalities and surgical resection. In terms of the specific types of ablation, then, um, you know, radiation is a form of ablation, um, even though not everyone thinks of it in that way. Um, so you know, radiation and, and then the various forms of radiation, and then within ablation, you have both thermal ablation and non-thermal ablation, of which irreversible electroporation, um, or as we call it, IRE, has has really become sort of the um, the front runner. Um, I think the reason that IRE has become the non-radiation ablative therapy of choice is that. Um, Thermal ablation, uh, while it has been tried in the pancreas, um, has has generally been associated with pretty high rates of complications and not very good results. Uh, and that's because the the heat uh, is probably causing a lot of damage to the pancreas and surrounding blood vessels. the um the big advantage of irreversible electroporation is that um, because it's non-thermal, it can be done right up against blood vessels. Um, it does not damage acellular structures such as the, the collagen wall of the blood vessels. And that's why it can be done with relative safety. Chemotherapy systemically remains kind of a, the, the first and foremost therapy, but, um, you know, even though, you know, tolerance may go down, effectiveness goes down, particularly, you know, over time. And so that's kind of um, spurred a lot of this research into adding these ablative mo modalities. Um, uh, you know, irreversible electroporation, um, you know, from a percutaneous or surgical standpoint, as far as, in a, you know, uh, non-radiative ablative modality um, makes a ton of sense, um, given that it can leave the collagen structure intact. Um and potentially uh, avoid some of the adverse events um, that we were seeing with, with thermal ablation. Uh, in, in addition to the cellular death, um, there's the um, uh, immune modulation uh, that this study and other studies in both um, uh, ionizing radiation as well as um, irreversible electroporation have been studying. And I think is an incredibly um, uh, tantalizing area to, to pursue because we've seen such advances in, with immunotherapy and so many other disease types, but pancreas has remained stubbornly um, unresponsive to it. And so somehow trying to find a way to make immunotherapy more effective um, ha has led a lot of people to continue to, you know, delve into the space. It's important to note that there really haven't been many large studies comparing two different types of ablative uh, therapy for locally advanced pancreas cancer. So just doing the study is important, um, and it's because because it's a hard it's a hard it's a hard disease to study. Um, and so what they did is that you know they took patients who had been treated with standard of care chemotherapy, modified fulfirinox. Um, who did not have at least obvious metastatic disease. Uh, we all know they likely had micrometastatic disease. And then they were randomized to either receive a uh, SABR, I guess, as they call it in Europe, I think in the United States, we call it SBRT um, versus percutaneous IRE. Um, and um, 
you know, you, you know, they, you know, it was stopped for quote unquote futility, but I, I think that has a different meaning, I think, to oncology. I think when we hear that a study was stopped for futility, that usually implies that it, uh, that the treatment was ineffective. It was stopped for futility in the sense that they weren't seeing a difference between the two arms. And that's why it was stopped, not because neither therapy was effective. I think what they did show is that in in both groups, in, you know, in these selected patients, um, they were able to see pretty reasonable survival that was better than you uh, would expect compared to historical patients treated with chemotherapy alone. The way it was designed was to see if either of these modalities were superior to each other. And, um, you know, I think it, it's, it's very useful information because, you know, there's been a lot of uh, parallel trials um, in this space that have not been comparing the two, but have been comparing, uh, you know, their the respective modalities to, um, to just chemotherapy alone. And I think this adds some context to, you know, potentially understanding the, those trials and, in, in, you know, the whole, the whole space. Um, so even though it's a quote unquote, you know, negative trial, um, I, I agree with Dr. White that I think uh, in the context of how we, we think about negative trials, um, this is um, very useful to know. These were the most interesting findings of the study. So even though there was no difference in overall survival, uh, we kind of saw actually opposite effects on the uh, secondary endpoints. So so Sabre had a slightly, but not statistically better um, local progression-free survival, whereas IRE had a significantly better distant disease progression-free survival. Um, and, and for, I think that's a very, that is a very tantalizing finding because it suggests that IRE might be having some sort of what we call a scopal effect um, controlling distant metastatic disease.